lift off on page 164. 164, Dalit. Okay, we're speaking about the Avoda. So you said, the Ramos says, the meaning is that we actually, we bow and we fall down on our faces during the Avodah, when they say, HaKodem Va'om, and also, Leil Lushabeach. But he says, the Shlich Tzibur, he should not leave his location for, for the purpose of falling on his face. If he has to step back, he should not step back. But Musaf, Dalit, the Iker Avodah Shal Kohen Godoho Yibam Musaf, what, what do we reenact the avoda? As the Gemara says in Menachos, when the Shalom of Purim Sosein, we're able to bring the oxen with our lips. That, let's say you have a stone floor, it's a Torah violation, because the only location you permit to prostrate yourself well, bow is only in the base of Migdosh. So what about if you put something to cover the floor? It's not a problem. So therefore, he says you should make sure that if you, when you bow, something should be covering the floor. Even even you have grass, straw, whatever it is. O yochutz bechtaliso, you put a garment there. Yesh limchos. Regarding the shlich tzibur, the shlich tzibur should not step. Any type of floor. Any type of floor. Even, even a wooden floor. Carpet, no. Carpet, it's okay. Carpet, if you don't have it, it's okay with a carpet. Because the carpet is on the, is on the floor. There's a floor. No, no that's, that's regarding calculation. When they calculate height. Today that we live in a different type of society, you, know, you don't want to get your pants dirty. So usually you put something down on the floor. I'm serious. You're right. It's a problem. Yesh limchos da rishninu afil nochosh koroch alakevel o yapsik. It's interesting. It's quoting the Gemara. It says that at first, even if you have a snake wrapped around your eel, you're not permitted to interrupt Yishmael Nesrei. Right? Even for kavod abrios. Bring back we discussed yesterday. I think that was a, a joke. Okay. So here it's. It, it, it's seemingly it's unrelated. There, you're not permitted to interrupt your phone to take the snake off your, your heel. He was being, why is he stepping back? He's stepping back for Shimon Esri, to bow. Right? This is like person washes, says the mozi, he doesn't have a knife to cut the bread. He says, he says, he says bring a knife. It's not a hepsic, because it's, it's, it's for the sake of eating. That, that's, I'm saying, if this is to facilitate the, the, the avoda, which is bowing, right? Be out of awesome king. He says, and not only that, the Ramos says, if a person, the Shlich Tzib, should, should step out for the sake of bowing, Yish Limchos, be out of awesome king, you should criticize, you should protest this behavior. Alfgar Poshra, meaning Shigam Shlich Tzib, also king. Shlich Tzib also steps back. There's not enough room to bow. Venir Shem Somcha, the Alich, the Mikri Hepsik. It's like the Taz. Walking is not a Hepsik. Ches Poshra, meaning, he says, but today, what's the Minog? Okay? This is something, you know, David, his son's bar mitzvah, he gave Talaysan to KJ. In honor of the bar mitzvah. So he says, the meaning is you have a shtender before the omud. So, and you, so as a result of that, you just remove it. And then the shlich tzibah bows. So there's sufficient room for him to bow. So he said, they have never seen it in the hat, and then they do shuls. No, it's, you're, you're adding, you should donate a shtender to the shul. That's what I'm saying. In honor of uh, whatever. It's called the heckish. <laughs> he forgot about it already. No, David is so I humble. Okay. No, 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 no. No, but the Taz says, no, but the, the way the Taz says, it's not because, it's because Halich no Eno Hefzik. So tell me because it's essential. He's not saying it's not a Hefzik because it's a necessity. He says because Halich Eno Hefzik. Ace Pasha Midik Shnosabo Stender or Stender. 
Lepanav b'avodah b'salkan also. So what happens when the chazan has to bow? They remove it. Hastenda dein okay raglav has zot of this. It's prima gadim. The shlich tzib stays on his location and sufficient room between himself and then they put it back afterwards. No, 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 not a bit. They have an omelet. Where does it, the chazan daven is up front or in the center? Okay, most shuls the chazan daven is up front. Let me tell you the way they used to do it. The way they used to do it. And they still do it. Kabbalah Shabbos, they daven at the bima. Myrev, they go up front. That's the only time you get two locations. Any of the tefillah, it's always at the omelet. Always at the omelet. The omelet is always in front of... Why Kabbalah Shabbos? Because Kabbalah Shabbos mm-hmm. is not really essential. To, it's, not, it's not one of the tefillahs. It's, 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 as it means, you're receiving... You're welcoming the Shabbos. Myriv, it's always before the Aron Kodesh. If for, for acoustic reasons, acoustical reasons, they can't hear you, you stand in the center. But what is really the proper location for the chazan to be? Right before the Aron Kodesh, before the Hechel. That's, that's where the chazan should be. No, no, so good. So they have no choice because up front, people are not able to hear as if he stands up front. No, good, good. You know, there's not, not enough room for a choir up front. So they, uh, what's his name? No, that's something else. In conservative or perform, everything's up front. Right, that's the whole idea. This is famous for some sofa. You know, that's the first thing that they took the bima out of the center put up front because the bima, bima is central to the Jew's life. As the heart is, is in the middle of the body, the bima, the Torah, that's the heart of Klal Yisrael. That's, cent- that's the central point. We do the, uh, right? We go around the bima on Oshana Rabba because that's central. Okay. Hey. Say that, Vidu. What's the... Order of vidui, chotosi of isi pashati. That's the vidui. Right, we go from the least to the most severe. Chotosi is inadvertent, or is deliberate, pashati is defiantly. Chet shogeg, ovun mezid, pesha merit, tzochloma hakal tchilo. First, he has forgiveness for the lesser, more serious, and the most serious. Because if you start off the most, you don't have to ask for the lesser. If Hashem's willing to forgive you for the most serious, you don't ask, ask forgiveness for the less. It's all inclusive. Now, no good leader to talk as we have before and be out of Mason. This is the Yisker. Now you understand why I have Yisker. You can have Yisker anytime. But since we want people to give to on behalf of the Mason, because every, everybody's judging him, Kippur. Even people who know what we say, Tchilas Masecho. It goes all the way back. Everything goes back to the very beginning. And Yom Kippur, everybody is, is taken into account. So we give Tzoka on Yom Kippur, Biyad HaMesim, Maskirim, Shmoseim, and we mention their names, their Neshamos. The HaMesim, Gab Kishlam, Kapur, Biyom HaKippurim. Even those who passed on also are atoned on Yom Kippur. But how can they be atoned? Unless we, the living do something for them, right? How, how can they be atoned? They could be a tone. They could be a tone, even if somebody doesn't. Not because of their own it's because, no, because they're suffering. They're suffering. The person is in Gehenna. The body in the grave, that's part of the kapara. The decomposition of the body. The Gemara says, we have the Gemara of Brokos, it says that kino um, lipsara mes, that the maggot to the flesh of the corpse is it's like putting a pin in the living flesh. We, what the person who passed away senses, it has nothing to do with physical senses, but it, there is a linkage between the body and the neshama. And the person has a degree, whatever that means, pain on a spiritual level when the body decomposes. That's the kapora. So the question is, what is the value of that kapora? That value, that plays into what? Into the judgment. 
How long did he suffer sufficiently? What level in Gan Eden does he go? See, even if the person dies, Yom Kippur is Kapora. This Kapora even on Yom Kippur, even if the person passed away. But even more so, if the living does on behalf of the person who passed on, on Yom Kippur. This in enhances the Kapora. You back to the Shtender or are you talking about this? Okay. Okay. Um, you said that if a man does a mitzvah in his lifetime, then okay. it has ongoing value, has a big foundation that makes gifts to shivers and so forth. Now he makes a gift well off his past away, but that gift causes something. Sure. That Definitely. That accrues to his benefit. What about if you had a positive influence on another person's life? And that person beyond that person's life still does good things as a result of that initial influence. But what about many generations later? They are only doing good because of all their ancestors where initially they were influenced by this individual here. This all accrues to that original person who influenced. So the Chavetz Chaim writes that if a person pays the tuition for a person to have a Torah education, and as a result of that Torah education, all the future generations are observant and they observe the mitzvahs. Everything accrues to that original person who offered that education or provided the education to that person. Of the time rights. So you set up a scholarship fund and you provide in, in the yeshiva where they're studying, you know, not uh, martial arts and uh, rugby and cricket and uh, whatever. Yeah, but that, that's part of the scholarship. They still have to pay the instructor, right? <laughs> Fully decomposed. To what degree is decomposition? Right? I mean, you know. Right, okay. A Russia... Gehenim is two different levels. Gehenim is the neshamas of Gehenim. The body decomposing, that has to do with, that, that, that's ongoing. It's an ongoing level until it fully, fully decomposes. Just reading. Uh, no, the neshamas in Gan Eden. The neshama sense. First is not a Russia, he's not there more than 11 months. The Shama sends after 11 months. Maybe there for a moment. Or even less than a moment. I mean, the Gemara says in Ervin that some people just go to Pischo Shal Just going near that, that's sufficient. They don't need more than that. And then they immediately ascend. Depends how deeply embedded the, the, the impurity is. Just reading, you know, they uh, there were many times you know they wanted to destroy cemeteries in Europe, even for World War One. So they had to actually it was the, the Vilna Gaon. They wanted to build some kind of stadium or put a road over that cemetery, and they had to zoom his body and and put it in another location. And it was about a hundred years after he passed away, and they took him out of the grave. And it's as if he was sleeping. No decomposition whatsoever. Not as much as Nyoda. So they shared it with Rathai Moser. He says, would you think differently? So would you think differently? If you read about the Villagon's life, every aspect, every moment, what he ate, the way he invested, the way he slept, everything was the most minimal level and fully invested. What, what does the maggot eat? Right? If you have a piece of iron, is the magnet iron. The, the, the maggots and the worms, they eat flesh or something which, which is edible. This, this has no relevance to them. So therefore, of course, the Kedusha, that's the Kedusha. There's a Orachim HaKadosh in this week's, uh, in last week's parsha. Kirit Arba Hi Chevron. Alan's the expert in Orachim HaKadosh. So he says, Kir Darba. Now, what is the, the residence for the neshama, the body? The body is the, is the residence for the neshama. Now, the four elements, right? 
The body is made up of four elements. So it's the Kirit Abba, he Hebron. The word Hebron, he says, that's Chibur. There's an attachment, because there's an attachment in the Shaman, in the body. So therefore, her body, even her physicality, was attached to the spiritual world. Sorry, man. Hakirat Arba, he Hebron. Even after she passed away, although her Neshama departed from her, her physicality was still connected. That's, that's, that's one of the interpretations of the Orchai Makosh over there. There's a chibur. Well, what does that mean? Because it was so spiritualized. Look, it was a Moshe I mean, who irradiated, despite he was, he, was, he was physical. That was a special level. But even not at that level. He didn't need it. He didn't need it. The whole kapur is, first thing you know, he craves, let's talk about it on an earthy level, to eat, not sushi, sushi is too sophisticated, potato chips. So, so that means you've, you, you've succumbed to your animalistic, okay, so that has to be purged. So that's part of the purging process. You have to, so that, that decomposes. It's interesting, the Gemara says in Sanhedrin, that we never learned here. Mara says that even a person who doesn't decompose, the second, the moment before Tchia Samesim, everything turns back to dust. Why? Everything turns back to dust. Even the greatest tzaddik has nothing to do with decomposition. Because why does a person die? Why is the death? Because of the Chet of Adam Rishon. So there, there's an impurity of, which, which is that the Tovera, the fruit of evil, that impurity is in the body. That's part and parcel of the physical makeup. To be, when it, the body's resurrected, that impurity remains in the ground, and what's resurrected is only the pure matter. As a result of that, the human being cannot be resurrected in his, phys, in his, in his previous state, because it has that impurity. So it has to immediately turn to dust, and that dust immediately is resurrected into the new form without that impurity contained within it. That's the reason why everything right before Tchis has to immediately, has to turn to dust for that reason. That's it. That's called Echel Shel Nochos. Everybody die. Everybody has to die. Let's see the Chofos of the